TV. Great to have you with us for a Friday night heading into round 12 and I am ready to go. I'm fired up. Stephen Craig with me because we are back after a long weekend. That is the most pumped I've ever seen I am you just pumped. to kick off the show. So yes. much excitement. It's a Friday uh, evening. We're getting into round 12 and it's, it's the exciting time where positions start to build up in the race to the finals. I haven't even been overseas. I've stayed yeah, in town yeah. during the break. Oh, well, you did take one early though. Like, that's so. a oh, here we go. Hey, is it the Apple Mac show? I'm just looking in our monitor there. It's um, We should get some money out of those. Yeah, what's going on there? Hey, Youth League Two Women, there's the games coming up this weekend. Round 12 tomorrow night and Sunday, our game of the round in Youth League Two, in one of our favorite competitions, by the way. Southern Peninsula, third, eight and three, take on Blackburn, fourth, seven and four. This is a very important game. Yeah, as Steve said, teams really starting to take shape heading into finals. We know how important finishing top two is. Both these teams need a win to stay in touch there, and they were both a little bit inconsistent they have been heading lately. into yes. the break. Yes, they have been. Uh, Southern Penn two, won two of their last five. Blackburn have won three of their last five. So. Especially with ladder positions, just a chance for one to get uh, on the up here. Yeah, it's going to be tough for Southern Penn maybe because a, a few of the players floating around in this game would have competed in the National Junior Classic yes. last weekend, which is, I think, six games in a weekend. You then have to get back into training, back into VJBL. So it's a big workload on the players at this point. Uh, Steve-O, you like the looks of Isabella Norton? Isabella Nolan. Nolan. In fact, Nolan. Eight, eighth in rebounding. There's a couple of uh, tidbits coming this one. Southern Peninsula... Uh, didn't really have too much of a break. I know there was a, a host of their players playing throughout the National Junior Classics. Um, got to catch up with uh, your good friend Andrea Belmonte. Oh yes, uh, during the week she was certainly pepped for yeah, this game. Should. She's going very well. Very refreshed she'll, after a week off. She'll pull down a dozen rebounds in this game. That's oh, is she playing exactly, this game? She's playing the seniors. That's exactly she's what she said the, too. Is she in the youthies or the seniors? She'll be playing both. Okay, fair enough. Oh, who are you going for to win this game? I'm going for Southern Pen. Yeah, Southern Pen at home. I'm going Sharks at home as well. Let's go to Youth League 2 men. And uh, old 2-bet special sitting beside me here. Uh, just couldn't decide um, what he's doing. So he's going to have a very good look at Collingwood. Well, oh, it's a super important weekend. Uh, not just for the All-Stars, but for also their opponents. Collingwood sit in fourth place mm. with a 10 and 4 record. They come up against two home games, by the way, although they are at their home away from home now at Darabin. Mm, yes. Uh, so it's an interesting one, two home games against Craigie Byrne, who are on top, First, 12 and 2. Frankston, second. who are second at 12 and 3. The All Stars, 5 and 1 at home. Athian Manuel, fourth in the competition in points at 19.2 points per game but he will have other matchups down the other end, especially Jack at Craigie Burner. Jackson Wynn, and of course, Craigie Burner, are a high-scoring team. Jackson Wynn, uh, fifth in the league at the moment at 19 points. They've only uh, lost games on the road. Um, uh, Frankston, Josh, uh, clearly second in three-point percentage at 37.5. You know that he's going to put a few up, and they've only lost games on the road. So uh, Collingwood's a big chance here. Yeah. Big chance. It is interesting, though, because Collingwood, not just this team, probably against across the whole league, they've definitely had a big, strong advantage at home. So now are they going to lose that advantage? You know, it's a difficult mm -hmm. place to play at the old Collingwood uh, home court, and it's going to be di going to be different at Darabin. It's definitely going to be different. I, I remember some good old days at Darabin. La Trobe University, when they were in the competition, used to play out there, Steve, as well as the Darabin well, Johns. Well, as well yeah. as the Darabin Johns. Um, can Collingwood get uh, one, two, or none? Uh, I think they can get one. Two's probably a big ass. I think they get Franger. I don't think they can beat Craigie Burn. Mm. Craigie Burner just on a roll right now. I think they get one, but I'm not willing to call which one. Oh, of course you're not. <laughs> Let's go to Youth League One Women. There's the games coming up in round 12 on the screen for you. Uh, we're looking at Camberwell fifth, who are seven and six at the moment, taking on Keelor in first, 10 and one. And clearly the only reason this game's been picked Campbell, out. Sea Town? Well, he's trying to suck up the yeah, Sea Town. Town. He's been absolutely hammering them. Doesn't give them a mention week to yeah. week. Uh, and clearly, he's uh, just trying you know, to tidy you know, himself up a bit. He actually, before the show, said, I'm going to mock Seatown here and put them up as game of the round. Oh, against you're the mocking team, them, eh? Against the team that's first on the ladder. <laughs> it's a stitch up. Straight, Why is this game of the round? The bus. Well, Campbell knocked off Sunbury when they were in first position. Yes. So they have the capabilities to knock off the very best. Keelor now uh, jumped the Jets into first. So this is another chance, an opportunity. They're very good on the road, uh, the Thunder. The they're very good everywhere, Keelor. <laughs> Just for the Dragons, they're a little bit inconsistent for mine. They can put it all together on their day. They've just got to do it at a consistent level. He wanted tonight to be known as Seatown uh, Friday. That's what he wanted. Uh, Steve-O, are you tipping Campbell? Well, that's correct. Uh, are you tipping Campbell well to win this game? 
Look, I am, and I did say if we couldn't find a sponsor, Sea Town Friday did have a good ring. To no, it does. Sea Town. Did you just say that you are tipping and the, the drag, game? The Dragons at home, if they can put it all together, which may happen, they can win this game. Uh, you've said they will win this game. Yes, that's that what is, you've that's said. The second and third time now, I've said it. So we there is on. nothing more certain, Craig. Kill. In every Big Kill. Three game this weekend, in all twelve divisions, there is nothing more certain than Keel or winning this game. It's, it's Steve-O, nothing more certain. You've jumped on the Seatown bandwagon to try and make wow. it up to them and you've picked the wrong week to do it. You, you should just... have waited till round 13 because Keelor will win this game and they'll win it comfortably, Craig. Give us an amount. I think they win by 15 plus. Well, I have an incredible amount of faith in Cara Jeffers and her team. <laughs> you, on the other hand, clearly do not. Youth League 1 men. There's the games coming up in round 12. Uh, I do like this matchup. These two teams have been known over the years to really go hard yep. at it. Sunbury and Werribee. Sunbury sitting first, 15 and zip. Werribee in third, 11 and 4. Can KC and the Sunshine Band continue to do what they've done for 15 straight? Well, Werribee have uh, really hit their straps recently. A little bit patchy at the start of the season, but they're in the midst of a five-game wins streak. They're absolutely rolling go going into the break, and I think I think they've got a chance here. They are probably, well, with Sunbury, the most informed team in the competition, but Sunbury have done nothing wrong up to this point as well. You can't go against the Jets, can you, Steve? No, but I agree with Craig. Werribee have just refound their mojo a little bit. Right. Um, How does that go? Their, their little mojo a little bit. Right, okay. Come on. Uh, Adetomi... Ayulara, I hope I got that right. Mid-season addition for the Devils has certainly not held them back, only pushed them forward, and uh, his injection into the lineup could be yeah. the difference for somebody's first loss. I'll tell you one thing. Werribee are going to be leading the power rankings in difficult names in this division. Uh, probably. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> tough names to remember and uh, just roll off the tongue. Uh, I'm going Sunbury to win. I think they'll get up. <laughs> Who are you going for? I'm going the Jets. Of course yeah, you are. I'm going Sunbury as well. Uh, Molten VYC women. Uh, there's the games up on screen. Busy weekend as always. Round 12. Altona fourth in the Terrell at 10 and 4. Take on Ringwood first in the Watson 13 and 2. Now, the reason I like this, Steve-O, you've actually done something well here for once. This doesn't incredible. happen often. Is because if this was round one, if this was week one of the finals, this would be the matchup. That's correct. Right, take us through First it. in Watson, fourth in Peril. That's why I said it. And there's a couple of key players I want to highlight here. Okay. First for Altona, yes. uh, Jess Rarity, fourth in assists per game, fourth in the competition. Mm -hmm. That's very good. The only thing that hurts her is that uh, her assist to turnover ratio is under one. Look after the rock, Jess. 51 assists, 56 Look turnovers. after the rock, Jess. That's what could be the barometer for Altona in this game. As my great mate Kel Chambers used to say, sweet Kel, squeeze the orange, Jess. Just squeeze it. Beautiful. The other one is Rachel Watson for the Ringwood Hawks. Board banger. Grabs the most offensive rebounds yeah. in the competition, has the most blocks in the competition. Why do they call her the board banger? The rebounds aren't even close. She's got 17 more than anyone else in the competition. Yeah, no. Offensively, that's correct. And she's been doing it for the last few years, of course. Who wins? Go. Uh, Altona at home. I'm going the Hawks I'm going on the road. Ringwood. Hawks on the road. Molten VYC men, there's the games coming up tomorrow night and Sunday. We are looking at Sherbrooke in seventh, six and nine. Six and nine, they're in seventh. Against the best team in the world. They're taking on Eltham, who are first in the same conference, 11 and four. There has got to be method to your madness, Steve, of putting this up as game of the week. And there is. I've right, got good. Not too many friends out at Eltham, uh, especially in the VYC men's department well, who, uh, this season. They've can, certainly given me them? a few phone calls. Just who can to blame them? Say, hey, Eltham uh, played number one. So, and he's picked this game. Saturday night. Let me let me explain. Yeah, Elton plays none of no, the morning tomorrow night. This one. This and you pick this one on Sunday. This is exactly part of my reason. Oh, right. oh. I'm, so, I'm so glad you've brought that up, boys, because okay. Elton do play Nutter Wadding on Saturday night, and that is a crunch time it's the game. game around. They will put <laughs> their effort, their beans in the one basket. Ooh. And say Don't forget about Sherby. We've got to win on Saturday night to really push ourselves into first. Do not and I'm telling you, Whoa. do not, He's put on to something. He's do put not on. forget about the Suns. He's on to something. Additions, yeah. Cam Bradley and Josh Dow mid-season. They've just created depth at Sunbrook. Oh, no, it's uh, Sherbrooke. Sherbrooke. My Sherbrooke. apologies at Sherbrooke. Sherbrooke. Danger, 
game. Wow. For the Elson So Wildcats. clearly... Two you, straight losses as well for Elson, mind you. So clearly you're onto this and you're going for Sherby to win this game on Sunday. Clearly that's what you're doing. I'm not making a oh, prediction. Yeah, okay. I'm simply highlighting to the Cats. You happen to make a pick? Please. Proceed with caution. Uh, Steve-O. Elfham win the most. Uh, mate, both. there's there's no there's no warning lights here. Uh, Elfham wins that game. Beautiful. Division 2 women, let's bring some sanity back to this. There's the games coming up in round 12. Here's the game of the round. We are going Wallen, second, nine and two, taking on North East, fifth, six and five. And I, I don't even need to look at the win-loss record here. I know why you've selected this game, Steve-O, because North East, are starting to get their act together. Mm. Benchmark game. Ooh. Big, big benchmark game for North East. On the road, doesn't help them. But 9-2 uh, Warren, four wins on the trot, looking in control, have pegged one back off Craigie Byrne for that top yes. spot. But this one's on North East. If you want to be very competitive in the postseason, compete for a championship, these are the types of games to just really rally that confidence Get yourself in, into gear, Here into fifth go. gear. Here we go. Pump yourself up. Here make we a real go. push to the finals. These are the games. You want to be the best, you've got to beat the best. Correct. Is that what you're saying? Bang on. They've won their last three. They've three. won three on the trot, mm -hmm. and they are rolling. I don't know if the break came at a great time for them, because it might have disrupted some momentum, but this is a big one. Uh, Wallen, probably the best scoring team in that competition, so it'll be good to see if North East can really lock down on the defensive end. I think anything within... Five or six points, I think you tip your hat to North East here. Steve-O, I, I like what you're trying to do for the Bushies. You're pumping them up. You, you're definitely uh, trying to spur them on. I think Wallen could seriously turn up at half-time in this game and still win it. I think Wallen will win it comfortably, Steve. That is disrespectful to the Bush Rangers. Division 2 men. Uh, there's round 12 up on screen for you. And uh, we're heading up to the Hot House. It's mm. one of our most favoured places. Uh, Mildura in 4th, 9 and 5, take on Coburg 2nd, 10 and 3. Now, before you get into this, Craig, I love my friends up in Mildura. Great part of the world. Love going up there. Cal Henry, Mayor of Mildura. <laughs> Um, but I'm on the Coburg bandwagon this year. Wow. I'm driving the bus. Four straight wins yes. for Coburg. I remember you driving warned us about I getting told on the, you. You warned us about getting on the Coburg bandwagon. If they find wagon. consistency, they're going to be an absolute force to be reckoned with. I'm driving the this bus. Is, this is the toughest test for them so far this season. I think if they go up and defeat Mildura. The flying colours. You're going to be up and about. Yeah, they're going to be up and about. Everyone will be up and about for the Giants. If Coburg is uh, taking a bus up to this game, I'm willing to drive them up to Mildura let, this week. Wow. Let me tell tomorrow, you. Tomorrow, if we you, leave, what, 7 o'clock tomorrow morning we leave on the bus? I'll drive the don't team Don't say we, I'm not leaving them. I'll drive them You Monday. are so far away from driving the Coburg <laughs> bandwagon bus. We've, we've heard what the, you do when you go to you're Mildura. You're the guy sweating, running behind the bus, trying to catch up to it, to <laughs> reach out and try and grab you know anything possible to jump on because right. you have... Just lamented their inconsistencies <laughs> across the entire course of the season. And just when they're starting to really pep their step yeah. into a championship in, contender, it's, oh, yeah, I'm on the bus. In, in, rel in related story. news, Justin actually picked up a Golden State Warriors scarf this morning for the first <laughs> time. He was a bit doubtful for a couple of years there. Go Warriors. Um, a Coburg to win. I'm on uh, it. Yes, but uh, certainly toughest test to date uh, for mine for the Giants. It, despite Craigie Byrne being on top, having to go to the hothouse, tough test. Still get it. Mildura. Kelvin Henry's due for a big game, by the way, as well. Is. Um, let's he's, go dropping, to, he's dropping 40. Is that, ooh, don't know about that. Let's go to Division 1 <laughs> women. Uh, round 12 games on screen for you. We're looking at Whittlesey in 4th, 8 and 6, taking on Geelong 7th, 7 and 6. It's a really important game, especially for Geelong on the road, Craig. Yeah, huge for uh, placings and qualifications. <laughs> yep. Big battle in the middle of this table. Whittlesey has a vast array of scores. LT Power, the new addition this season. Is she still coming off the bench, LT Power? Uh, couldn't tell you. Who's coaching out there? Hayley Munro? Yeah. Hayley, put her in the starting lineup. Get the kid up. Get her starting. She's a star. Uh, Denuncio going at 9.6 per game. Lambrou going at 7.9. And Darcy Sanders at 7.4. So Saunders. Three. Saunders. Saunders, sorry. Going at over... Three more players going at over six points. A really Share good spread over there. They can score in a number of ways. I think they maybe just need someone to step up and maybe take control a little more. At Geelong, Steve-O, look like they're getting their act together. I couldn't find out whether... Called uh, them out a few weeks ago. They're Cole getting their act together. Off the bench still. I was trying to do that research very well. Well, if she's coming off the pine, Haley, start her. Wow, just putting the we, right to the coach. As you mentioned, we, we uh, spoke, put the, the spotlight on Geelong. Yes. 
I think they're just starting to yes, they're warming get the up. cogs back very into good, gear. Very good and team. Uh, what are they now? In seventh, um, massive sleeper in the finals if they can qualify. Who wins? I think Geelong might. Just, I uh, think the Supercats might get a going. upset here. Is it is it a huge upset? Like it's just a 50-50 game. Sorry, I think I, they win. Yeah, no, I think Geelong win. Right, Division One men. Uh, there's the games coming up in round 12. Big matchup, huge matchup. Looking forward to this one. Shepherd in first 12, our 13 and 1 take on Chelsea in third 12 and 3. Shepherd won 8 in a row. Chelsea have won 5 in a row. They're both in form. It will feature some of the biggest stars in D1 men. Uh, short and sweet, I think, with, with this one, as you mentioned, first and third. Shepparton, the best defensive team in the land. 71.2 opposition points per game is first in the competition. Uh, for Chelsea, 7 and 1 on the road. That's impressive. Yes. Um, Corey Stanifer, I know we, we talk about him, but we probably don't mention him enough. 24 points per game, nearly 11 rebounds, 6.5 assists. None of that really matters. I think the barometer for the goals is Stanifer under four turnovers. Okay, that's, that's what we're looking for? That's what we're looking for. Have you crunched for. some numbers? Or crunch, or is that just clearly, crunch yes. some numbers. There's like, four and five turnover games where they're a little bit shaky. They can still win the game. Under four turnovers, that's where we go. Craig, uh, I'm telling you now, out of Gators territory, climb the vine, mate. Get Climb the vine. Everyone's talking about climbing the vine because Cameron Vines is in MVP territory at the, at the yep. moment. Climb the vine, I'm going the Gators to win. Yeah, I'm taking Shepard to win. They have just absolutely crushed some teams on their home floor. I think that's probably my only knock with Chelsea. They might not have put a, put away a few teams enough. They let teams hang around a little bit. Shepard and just get the job done. Climb the vine, steve -O. It's nice, I'll give you that one. Uh, state champ women. Uh, Hang on, these have been Chelsea game. Game. Shepard I'm going Shepard yeah. 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 Um, and state champ women, there's the games coming up round 12. Uh, we're headed out to, all on Saturday night, all tomorrow night by the way. Uh, heading out to State Basketball Centre. Knox a first, 11 and one, taking on Southern Penn, sixth, five and five. This is a very important game, uh, especially for the Sharks. Yeah, probably a bigger game for the Sharks here. They've lost four of their last five after some great yes. early season form. They look like a really strong finals contender. Need to find their form again. They have the talent to get it done. I think it's just they've got to get it done on the, on the court at this point. Knox have been absolutely rolling. Nine straight wins. They're playing brilliant team basketball. One of the best coach teams in the league. Uh, Jez, Shelley, Beckott, maybe head-to-head. -head. Maybe. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Is, if, if so, it'll be a very enticing matchup, and not just for big V fans, but for WNBL fans, of yes. course. Um, Sydney Coleman is my player to watch, obviously, was the import replacement down at the Shark Tank. Has had two games under a belt, now's the time in to now. really settle in. Had that break, of course, uh, last weekend. Now's the time for her to get going and make the Sharks give a real big push. Raiders to win. Yeah, I'm with Knox. Southern Penn. Ooh, oh, really? shout, quick shout out to Jared Hillier, the Southern Penn coach, for oh, getting yes. a job as Australia's under three on three. 18 three on three coach. Headed overseas. At the Youth yeah. Olympics. The Youth on Olympics. On well done. Good on you, mate. Fantastic. That's One of the best news. coaches all around. Yes, really good guy, too. State champ men, uh, there's all the games coming up in round 12. Let's finish it off for another big week of Big VTV. Our game of the week picks itself. And we mentioned these two last night. We, we did. were talking dynasties, of course. Ringwood and Waverley. Ringwood are currently first, eleven and two. Waverley are second, ten and three. Uh, offense versus defense. To put it simply, Ringwood uh, ninety-seven point nine points per game lead state championship men. Uh, Waverley, the defensive end, seventy-five points uh, they give up, which is first Number one in the competition. Yep. I think it was about three years in a row now they've had the best defense in yep. the comp. Uh, Jacob Gibson, 13 points per game, just going at a clip under 23 points. Whereas you look at Waverley's offense, it's so spread out. Yep. There is no player in the top 10 in the competition that wears a Falcons uniform. Did he, did he really write that? Waverley, no player in top 10 points per game. Top 10 points Dash, per game. Sharing, sharing the, the sugar. sugar. Did you really write that? Sharing the sugar? That's what they do. Right, okay, fair enough. Um, who's going to win the game? Uh, oh, when in doubt, go the home team. Uh, I think that's, that's what I'm cool. leaning They're on right good. now. They're very good. I think the interesting thing you say about Ringwood is, you know, Gibson does score a lot, but even when he's not going, you know there's players who maybe don't step up and score every week because they don't have to, but they always have the ability to if someone does shut down a Gibson. Uh, I'm going with Ringwood, usually pretty good after a break. The other thing that uh, is interesting, look at this one, Ringwood usually just 
cool their jets and make their way into the season. Mm. They're 11 and 2 after 11 rounds. They look very good, don't they? Normally they pick up steam towards mm. the end. Uh, look, I think it's a it's an absolute boon barner. Um, I think it's going to come down to the last couple of plays. The best team that I've seen in state champion this season, Waverley. They're the best team that I've seen. Um, okay. And I think uh, I think Ringwood start do, favourites. Do we get a bit of uh, Cal versus Snowy again? <laughs> oh, I think we'll get a little bit of everything. But um, I think Ringwood start favourites at home, but Waverley the best team I've seen so far this season. So it would not surprise me whatsoever to see Waverley get up, but it's gonna be a close game either way. So there we go, round 12 coming up this weekend. Get out there and support your teams tomorrow and on Sunday. We're back here Monday night, back into the swing of things on Big V TV to wrap it all up. Uh, youthies on Monday, seniors on Tuesday. We'll see you then.